Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on the Brugley channel. First off in this video, I'm going to be explaining Backrooms Level 48, or the Sunset Beach, which is a really safe level, and it's next in order of the levels I've been doing. And after that, I'm going to talk about some more of the safest Backrooms levels, uh, because it's good to know which levels don't have creatures in them that want to eat your face, or environments that want to hurt you. So sit back and relax, and get ready for some chill, safe Backrooms levels. So first off for the video is level 48, or the Sunset Beach, which is classified as a class habitable, and is safe, secure, and literally has no harmful entities. The level itself is a never-ending beach that is bordering a lukewarm ocean, and the deeper you get into the level behind the beach, there's a huge tropical rainforest. The level doesn't have a day or night cycle, and stays constantly at sunset, and the sun itself is a reddish yellow color. Along the beach, there are makeshift houses that have been built over the years. Some of the houses are really nice, with modern looking appliances and stuff like that, which is weird considering this is the backrooms. But oh well. The forest I talked about earlier is around 600 feet behind the beach, and it's full of typical tropical trees. In the forest, there are also some species of animals that are harmless. For instance, there's a jaguar type creature called Langwires. They have blue skin and purple eyes instead of, you know, the typical dotted skin from real life. There are giraffes, which are like giraffes, but have green skin, and they're way bigger than the real life ones. And there are several other creatures that have similarities to real life ones, but they're different color, different sizes, and they act different. They're all calm. There's one community here called the Varroca Farmers, and it's got 300 people that harvest Varroca plants on the level. And then there's other people who live here that aren't in that group, but they're not documented either. So yeah, this level's kind of like an oasis in the back rooms, and honestly, it's a place that I wouldn't leave if I had made it here. There'd be no point. It's a safe level on a beach, I mean, <laughs> how else better can you get? To enter this level, you can no-clip into the sand on level 134, and to exit, you can swim to the bottom of a lake in the forest to be sent to level 121, but like I said, I don't think I'd be leaving here. It's safe, it's a beach, it's always sunset, it's not hot, it feels great. I mean, why, why would you leave? Level 178, aka the Kyoto Dreams. This level has a survival difficulty of zero and has no entities, so it's pretty much as safe as you can be in the back rooms. The level looks like a traditional Machia house. I might be mispronouncing that, not sure. Apologies if I am which is a type of house that's found in Japanese culture. The inside of the house has looping hallways that make it seem bigger than it actually is, although the level is pretty big, it's not infinite. But like I said earlier, the level does have zero entities, but it also has water and food and even clothes in some areas as well. So since the level is so safe, it's kind of used as a base or outpost for lots of other people who just want to chill or get something to eat or rest without having to worry about a wretch running right after them. The level isn't just inside of the house though, since there's multiple sections actually outside, like a courtyard area with a hot spring in the middle or our big wraparound porch, and there's kitchens and bathrooms and showers, there's tons of different areas, pretty much just like a resort. When you spawn in on the level, you'll be in the middle of the house, which is the main area. You'll immediately smell the fresh scent of bamboo and wood and hear trickling water. It's pretty relaxing. Walking out of this main area through wooden sliding doors will reveal kitchen areas. These kitchens have fridges and tap water and ovens, you know, all the good kitchen stuff. Here's where the almond water and the food can be found, as well as some prepared meals in the refrigerator. These meals have been tested and are actually safe to eat, but no one knows who prepares them. Nice. The bedrooms and bathrooms can also be found by leaving the main room and going down the hallways. And all of the places and facilities here are safe to use. There are a couple outposts here, one of them is called the Order of the Sun Goddess, and it's a section of the Lost group that live on this area. There's around 12 people who live in it, and they're moderately passive. And the other group is called the Sector of Amateresu. This group has bases spread out all over the level, but its central base is located in the studio room near the kitchens. Both of the groups I just mentioned are moderately friendly, and they just live here because it's chill. 
You can enter this level by falling asleep in level 7, which will cause you to be sent here, and you can exit using one of four methods. The first one is staying in the courtyard's hot spring and falling asleep in the water. If you do that, you'll wake up on level 66. You can also noclip into a darker colored wall to be sent to the level that you came from. The third method is walking around the level for a few weeks until you find a door that's labeled exit, and all you gotta do is walk through it to exit. Pretty simple. The last method is to walk inside of one of the pantries inside of the kitchen area, and you'll be sent to the anti-reality bowling alley. No clue what that is, but uh, you'll go there if you go in the pantry. Pretty chill Japanese style house with a hot spring and bedrooms. I mean, that just screams safety, right? The second safe level for this video is level 39, aka the Enchanted Forest. That's a very Disney princessy name, so I hope it's good. This level is a class zero difficulty, obviously, that's literally what the entire video is about. And it was discovered in 1988 by an anonymous wanderer. Cool. The level is made up of curvy dirt roads that go through a thick forest, specifically an oak forest. The level actually isn't that big and is only around 190 miles or 300 kilometers in size. It's also in the shape of a circle and not a square. The level has no day or night cycle and it's just stuck at a constant dusk time. The pathways on the level are around 6.6 .6 feet wide or around 2 meters and can be really confusing if you're not paying attention because they randomly curve and curl back and you can lose your place if you're not keeping your eyes open. Like I said, the trees inside the forest are oak trees and they can't be destroyed, broken, removed, moved at all because their roots are physically fused with the ground of this level somehow. They don't just have roots in the ground, they're like intertwined with the core of the level. Nice. The landscape is also pretty hilly and there's random ponds scattered around. People who have been here say that the level gives a random feeling of calmness and serenity, and some even say that the level gives them intense nostalgia, even though they've never seen the level or been to a place like this in real life. The only dangerous thing about this level is that it's so comforting and calm that wanderers can get entranced by it and forget to sleep or drink or eat, so they might unalive themselves from dehydration or starvation. But all you have to do to avoid that is to drink some almond water and the effects will immediately reverse. On the outskirts of the level there are these areas called the borders, and they're pretty much really dangerous areas to go in. They have heavy winds and thunderstorms, and sometimes there's even tornadoes, and the temperatures are also way colder in those areas than in the main area. The sky is also darker and cloudier. So pretty much what I'm saying is, don't go to the border of this level. It's lame. The real homies just sit and chill in the woods. There are no bases or outposts here, but it is possible to make one as long as you take into consideration the fact that you're going to have to drink almond water so you don't get entranced. You can enter this level by going into the woods of level 37 and finding the transition into the trees of this level, level 39, and then you keep walking and you'll eventually get here. There are also three other ways to enter, but you have to be past the level to enter it, so here they are. To exit, you can just noclip through a hill to be sent to level 63, or you can noclip through a weird looking oak tree. And if those two don't work, you can use one of the other seven ways it lists to exit. There's nine exits, so I mean, it's pretty easy to leave. So yeah, this one's just a nice calm forest. I mean, literally that's the definition, the epitome, if you will, of a safe backrooms level. Level 149, aka the Coconut Isles. This level is classified as a class habitable level, and it's completely safe. There are also sustained communities here as well, or rather, one community. Also, apparently it was discovered 600 years ago by an Iroquois tribe. Cool. The area looks like a sky filled with sand islands that are floating around. There are coconut palms everywhere, obviously by the name, and the level stretches for around 250 miles. There's no day or night cycle and it's constantly in the evening time, and you can also see the sun which will stay in the exact same spot all the time and it never moves. Also it's around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or 32 degrees Celsius, always, so it's pretty hot, but it can be windy or rainy sometimes. 
In total, there are around 2,000 individual islands, and each of them are different sizes. Some are around 6 kilometers wide, and some are about 5 meters wide. It really just depends on where they're at. Each of them are also in different elevations, and different inclines, and they all have different topography. Each island has anywhere from 1 to 200 palm trees growing on them at all times, and these trees are actually proportionate to the island size. So if the island is really small, the trees will be really small, and vice versa. If the island's big, the trees will be big too. Typically, the closer to the middle of the level that you get, the bigger the islands and the trees will get as well. And the majority of the big islands have other vegetation like grass and bushes, and even some kind of flowers too. There are also bugs from reality here, like crickets and roaches, that live in the ground and are flying around. That rhymed. And the ground they live in is actually unbelievably rich in nutrients and it can support life without any help. Nice. All of these properties make this level extremely habitable and it's a very good place to live. You can eat the coconuts for food, you can eat the insects for food, and you can drink the rainwater, which you can collect when it rains, I guess. And there aren't even any entities here. So it all sounds pretty chill to me. The very far outside of the level is called the Barrier, and it's located around 120 miles from the Middle Island. This area is called the Last Island. Now at this area, there's a really strong gravitational pull, which means the winds can't really support the weight of the island like the other ones, so it kind of just floats around and makes it and rocks like a boat constantly. This makes it really dangerous. Wanderers have also said that they've heard really loud noises when they're near this area and they felt really uneasy when being at this point, so it's recommended not to go there. The only actual outpost here is the Lost Sons of the Coconut Isles. It's the only settlement here and it's located on the biggest island of the level. They live in Iroquois-style longhouses and treehouses, and they just vibe there. I mean, what else can I say? They don't talk to anyone else, and there's around 40 to 100 people who live in this group. And like I said earlier, it's one of, if not the oldest groups in the back rooms since they were settled here over 600 years ago. Uh, the only entity here is a coconut snare, which is that thing if you put your arm inside, it can get stuck. So... There's only one way to enter this level, and it's by no clipping into a certain part of level 46, where the gravity is different and is similar to the largest island's gravity. And to exit, there's also only one way. You have to go to that barrier area, and then you have to successfully no-clip in it. Only five people have ever done it, and those five people have all ended up on either level 37 or level 140. But most people who get here just stay here for the rest of their lives, since it's pretty hard to leave. Nice. So it's a level of floating islands with palm trees and coconuts everywhere. Sounds fun to me. Next up is another safe level called the Bunker Springs, or level 27. This level is classified as class 0, and it's a very peaceful but kind of small level. The actual level itself is infinite, but the accessible parts of the level where you can go are pretty small. At around 200 feet, or 18.6 meters in size actually. But the area you can go to is a huge hot spring full of very mineral rich water. Some people have even taken a drink of the water and they say that it makes you feel really calm and really empty headed and like your stress is completely gone. And they even get more energy too. The water temperature hovers at about 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32.2 degrees Celsius, which is about what a typical hot tub from real life is set to. High on the walls of the cavern, there are two holes that pour in new water to the spring, and there's a hole in the very corner under the water that will drain the water that's in there now, so it's constantly getting cleaned out with new water added, which is pretty cool since lots of people come here. On that note, apparently this level is pretty popular among people who are on level 11 specifically, since you can get to it really easily from there. The water gives a really therapeutic feeling to the person if they bathe in it for over an hour, and it can get rid of stress and make a person really calm, and it even can change your outlook on things and make you feel optimistic. Nice, dude. The water can also heal very small ailments like rashes or acne, and even small cuts, but it's not recommended to stay in the water for more than two hours, since if you do, you'll get dizzy and nauseous, and you're also not supposed to take up time for too long in there, since there's like a line of people waiting, but I'm taking as long as I want to, because it sounds pretty cool. There are no bases here, and you can enter this level by turning a shower on the hottest setting and closing your eyes. If you do this, then you'll be teleported to the tunnel, which is slightly above the pool, and then you can just walk down some stairs to get into the water. 
To leave, you just have to walk to the corner of the pool area where Meg has built a staircase that goes into the tunnel that the water flows out of, and you can just walk down that tunnel and you'll be sent back to where you came from. Cool. So pretty much a level you can go to just to chill on the hot spring, where the water can actually heal you too. Nice! the Crimson Forest, which is an enigmatic sublevel found on level 9.1 in the back rooms. This level is classified as class habitable, meaning it's safe and there is sustained communities here. And this level literally has no harmful entities. So that's nice. The Crimson Forest is a serene area with a thick, cool fog that hovers around at most times. The entity called the Lantern watches over this area and keeps all the harmful entities away. The dirt and plant life are all covered in different shades of crimson, thus the name, the Crimson Forest. The forests on this level are very expansive, and most of them aren't fully mapped or explored, but the areas that are well known have wide valleys, woods, rolling mountains and creeks running all throughout. The streams all end up in the same spot, which is a wetland swamp area. Cool. This level does have something weird about it though, specifically its geographic folding. Yes, I said geographic folding. The tectonic plates here are not flat like normal, they're actually wrinkled up like paper. So this means that in some spaces, if you look up, you'll just see more of the forest that's on your level, but it's actually up. You can actually get to the forest above you if you just keep walking until you hit one of the tectonic folds. So wherever those folds are, the concept of down becomes relative, and it really doesn't mean anything anymore, because once you reach the fold, the gravity will reverse you and you will fall upwards. Yes, fall upwards. That's actually dope though. Even though it's weird, it's actually safe, and the people who live here have gotten pretty used to the concept. The fog that I mentioned earlier, it actually never goes away, and it keeps the temperature here around 46.4 degrees Fahrenheit or 8 degrees Celsius. That's the best kind of weather though, let's be real. The cause of the fog isn't really known, but some think that the lanterns emit it to keep the place safe. The water here is good to drink, but it's still best if you boil it first. And the settlements around actually collect it in huge tanks that let the silt sink to the bottom before they drink it. Another thing about the Crimson Forest is that it's home to tons of different creatures that range from bugs to huge mammals. And most of the creatures here look like they do in real life, just with some physical alterations. Like a deer might have eight eyes, or a moose might be red. Also, there's a species of owl that lives here that flies completely silently and has four wings. That's terrifying. Even though these entities aren't dangerous, they still are natural predators which should be avoided just like in real life. Obviously in real life you're not going to go running into the woods just chasing after four winged owls, so just let him have a space and he'll let you be. There are bear creatures, wild dog creatures, and big cats that resemble wild cats that have also been spotted in the forest. Like I said, these animals don't actively seek out humans, but it's good to just avoid them and leave their habitat alone. But since they don't actually attack humans, the level is still considered completely 100% safe. There's no internet connection here, so the outposts that report to Meg have to do so on a once a month basis, which sometimes doesn't work either, because in order to send information, you actually have to leave this level, and to pass to the next level to get a signal is very dangerous, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but most of the outposts are regularly kept up with. Since traveling through level 9 and level 9.1 is very, very dangerous, the majority of people who come here end up staying here forever because of how peaceful it is. I don't blame them. I mentioned the word outpost like 15 times already, so let's get into the actual ones that are here. First up is Rosewood and the Independent Cabins, who recently contacted Meg with news of a newborn baby being born here to make the number of residents inside of the Rosewood area 83. Now there are more that live on the outskirts, but 83 live inside the community. This place is a community of cabins grouped by Big Rock Lake, which is obviously a big rock lake. Rosewood is also the main place where Meg does research too, and it's also the place that offers sanctuary to people traveling through the level. The 82 adults and one child that live here help Meg research by collecting soil, growing crops, as well as preserving food, and the place is actually well known for its pickled eggs, which Meg considers them a delicacy, so that's nice. But like I just mentioned, not every citizen of Rosewood actually lives by the lake. Some live deeper in the woods to live their own quiet lives in cabins, but still come to the main area for socializing and stuff. There's an estimated number of 40 people that do this that live outside of Rosewood but still are classified as Rosewood citizens, making the total number of Rosewood citizens at 123, which is not bad. The last main group is called the Cabins of the Lost, 
which is the people who've gone into the woods and have never returned, but also have not been found dead. Since this level's reputation is that it's sort of a utopia, people come here so they'll forget the back rooms and they end up becoming one with nature. Some exploration teams have witnessed these humans with red skin and pale eyes deep in the forest. And most believe these people are the ones who go into the forest and don't return. The Rosewood community believes that the crimson skinned humans have given their soul to the woods and have become one with them. It's still kind of creepy though. That's it for the main outposts, but there are five to six more fringe outposts that have about 15 to 30 people that are scattered around the whole level. There's only one way to enter this level and it's through the extremely dangerous Crimson Field, which is on level 9.1. Pretty much, it's a dark field with tall grass and a weird red lighting that comes from the sky, and there are also really strange noises from the creatures there, like growls and stuff like that, and people disappear all the time trying to cross it. In order to reach the Crimson Forest from here, you do have to go through the field, but you have to go the opposite direction of the red glow in the sky until you find the patches of fog, which will signify that the Crimson Forest is near. And the lanterns there put off a soft glow through the fog to let the traveler know that it's safe this direction. But if you get really lucky, you'll find a trail that Rosewood has marked for their citizens inside the field. They put this trail here so that the Wi-Fi teams, they go out every month to send reports to Meg could find their way back through the field. So if you find this trail, follow it, and you'll end up in Rosewood. Nice. To exit this level, you have to go back the way you came, which like I said is extremely dangerous unless you follow the right path, so you probably shouldn't. But this level's awesome. Like, it's finally a peaceful level without a catch. It's a nice community by a lake, and it's 46 degrees constantly. Like, how could it literally get better than that? Last for the video today is level 63, which is classified as class zero and is safe, secure, and has no entities at all. This level is a very popular go-to level in the backrooms for meditation and relaxation purposes. Physically, the level is just a vast blue sky with these big white puffy clouds everywhere, and there are wooden bridges and platforms that are suspended in an unknown way that connect everything together. There are walls of big green vine-like structures that come out of the void and form walls from far away from the paths, just to where you can barely see them, but you can still recognize that they're vines. These walls constantly shift and they form patterns every minute or so, and they aren't studied very well and little's known about them or why they behave the way that they do, but they're peaceful, so. The collective thought is that level 63 is very high up in the sky somewhere because the atmospheric pressure is low and you're on the same level as the clouds, so it's obvious. The temperature here is a constant 18 degrees Celsius or 64.4 degrees Fahrenheit, making it extremely comfortable and perfect for meditation. There is something a little weird about the sun on this level, and it's that the day-night cycle still happens, but the light from the sun never goes away, even though the sun goes away and you can't see like the actual orb, the light never goes away, so it's never dark and it's unknown why this happens. But like I said earlier, the level is completely devoid of living things except for vines and wanderers. And overall, it's very, very safe and secure. And for these reasons, the level has earned a reputation for being a good place for meditation, relaxation, and respite for travelers. A place where your mind can finally rest, you know, after you just got hunted by three hows. There are also things on this level called meditation points. These are platforms that the wood bridges sometimes lead to, and they're really far away from the main parts of the paths, so they're a little bit more secluded. And physically, they're circular wood platforms with a bench in the middle. And when you enter these platforms, the noise of the wind and the ambient sounds from this level dissipate, and it becomes really quiet inside, which again, makes it perfect for meditation. That's why they're called meditation points. This level has a very high wanderer attraction rate, so Meg makes sure that no one tries to profit off of this. And there are no actual outposts here because it was collectively decided that a settlement would take away from its relaxation purposes, so the level will always remain resident free. But like I said earlier, tons of wanderers come here and that's okay. To enter this level, you can walk through an old oak door in the wall on level 797, or you can no clip through the stairs on level 39. The only way to leave this level is to jump into the void below you, which will cause you to fall unconscious and you'll wake up in a safe level somewhere. Yeah, this level is definitely a spot I would frequent, especially the days where I just want to clear my head. So I'll keep that in mind when I visit the back rooms next. <laughs>